Okay, so we had another good day of parts hauling. Where the heck are you, Mike? Tell them, Mike, how'd we do? Uh, we did pretty good. We did pretty good. We got a truckload of stuff, and I think we only spent like 200 bucks between the both of us. This was supposed to only be a quick $30 trip for one item, and it wound up being more dollars for more items. Yeah, and like a three-hour trip. Let's uh, unpack and show you what we got. Ignore that stuff. That's uh, just Mike's garbage that he leaves in my yard. You gotta be like the van of light car parts. Tail like. <laughs> pipes? <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, we had a pretty good parts haul. We only went for that. I paid $30 for the subframe. And uh, the plan is to use it to make an engine test stand. I think we're going to get some square tubing, get some cheap caster wheels, and make like a move around rollable engine stand. Test, so you know how we love to pick up our cheap $500 marketplace motors. So we should probably test to make sure they're runners. Also scored a whole bunch of ultra rare Pontiac Ventura parts that I've come to know that are very hard to find. Front nose piece, cow, perfect taillight lens and assembly. What'd you get, Mike? Oh, back seats for the duster that matched my front ones. And uh, the guy gave me... We went for those. Yeah, we got the white ones for and free. And then these came in for free. And we got tailpipes. Oh, tail, yeah, Dustin Mopar tail pipes. pipes, whatever. Uh, oh, and Mike got me a non-cracked front glass. Since two out of four Novas have cracked windshields. Oh, we'll see about this one. Yeah, you didn't break it getting it out, but will you break it putting it in? Probably. <laughs> this is why we buy windshields this way, because this was $10. Actually, I don't even know if you could count that. Anyway, I bought all of it for 80 total, so yeah, we, we did all right. Like bucks to we could break one a year for that price. Okay. Don't break <laughs> the one a year. Okay, well, the whole point of this video was supposed to be that we're going to build an engine run stand. I really want to get the $400 motor that we picked up that has the roller rockers and some other trick looking stuff on it that we know nothing about and uh i want to hear it run see how it sounds you know hopefully it'll be a good unit the subframe is in awesome shape usually all this stuff's like super cooked out this is pretty decent oh we should probably really quick show off the package the care package we also received today that was enough for the whole day uh viewer who also has a youtube channel i'll plug his channel here sent us a care package of Nova stuff. Huge thanks to Ray. It came right before we left to go to the junkyard. So we just opened it up and looked at it real fast, but let me show you what we got. Okay, what do we got here? Master cylinder, good master cylinder. Bag full of body bushings. Windshield wiper bottle. Eyebrow. Soft seal for the doors. Yeah, must have just seen the last video where Mike breaks every single one of these that's on my cars. <laughs> Not only is he a windshield killer, he kills my electric wire harness holders. Tail light, soft seal for the trunk, overflow bottle. Oh, front leaf spring baskets and hardware. A full key set and locks. Uh, windshield wiper motor. Maybe we can fix the 72. I'm always crying that that car gets stuck in the rain all the time with no... I got a ticket. I got pulled over in a ticket in that car for windshield wipers. So thank you, Ray. Uh, the other eyebrow. Outside mirror. The other taillight housing. Battery tray. tray. Throttle cable, which we need because... That one's all gacked, so that 
should, this should work on the Ventura. So hopefully this will work on the Ventura. Marker lights and gaskets, front turn signal housings for a 70, the clear lenses with the gaskets, heater door, also needed on the 72 if we decide to put the heat back in it. Marker lights with the bulbs. Oh, no way. These are the seals for the tail lights. Washer pump, repair kit, wiper motor mounting screws, some door stuff. There's a card in here too. Uh, voltage regulator, some wiring. And a glove box and the glove box screws. We didn't see that. Before. No, I didn't see that at all. That was just directing something. Oh, stickers! Heck yeah, we will. Uh, we will definitely wrap you. On the oh car, yeah, definitely for sure. Some cards. Like I said, we will definitely plug uh, Ray's YouTube channel. You guys should go over and check him out. He's got a, uh, a 70 that he's been building into like a pro touring uh, car and it's super, super rad. Um, way nicer than anything we bump out on this channel. Uh, there's Ray's YouTube information. So make sure to check him out. Thank you so much, Ray. This is quite the care package and we will definitely use almost all this stuff. Huge thank you. And uh, yeah, feel free if you guys ever wanna send us something we love free stuff. So make sure, you know, just send it. Message me. I'll give you an address. We like we like free. If it's free, it's for me. Not just Chevy parts either. No. Mopar pretty, parts. Pretty much just Chevy. <laughs> uh, don't, don't send your Mopar stuff to my house. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back out here. And I'm sure you're asking yourself, Dan, why did you need that? Uh, why did you need that subframe? And uh, let me explain, let me explain. So the whole reason that I needed that is uh, I saw it at the junkyard, it was laying on top of a car and the guy threw out 30 bucks for a price for it, but I didn't really need it. And it does have like a little bit of front end damage to the one rail. I was like, ah, I don't know, I don't really need it. But like, I never really stopped thinking about it because you know, I'm a hoarder and just love junk. So eventually, I had the plan, why don't we build an engine stand with it? Because it's just, just, it's just perfect for that. All right, so here's the subframe, and let me explain my plan with this thing. So, I have this square tubing that I'm going to weld to the bottom of the frame rail here. And on the back section here, I think I'm going to go to the outside with it, because it's flatter than the inside and I'd rather have it be wide than narrow but I'm going to weld these short little sections on here this is only three inches and then I'm going to use this square tubing so that it slip fits into here then I'll drill through both pieces this piece and that piece and it'll have some sort of pin to keep the keep the uh tubing on there. I cut these plates to go on the bottom of these cheap Harbor Freight caster wheels that are really nice by the way. Uh, so it's a greasable bearing which is sweet and these tires are also inflatable so that should help move this thing around when it's got some weight on it. But I got through these in the drill press and drill out the holes. That, I'm, that I marked on them, but these will get mounted onto the caster wheels. Now I've already taken this square tubing and cut it to the lengths I want. I want the stand to be kind of similar to a height that it is right now. now. Obviously it's in the driveway and everything's kind of lean and teetering. We'll push the Ventura out of the garage so that I can get this set up in the garage on like an actual level and flat floor to assemble it and build it. Basically we'll take the plate you know, this will be a back one. We'll weld that right to there. And then that'll get bolted to the caster wheel. And then that whole assembly will slip fit onto the bottom of the rails. So that this thing can actually roll around and stuff. Now we will use the cross member. Because obviously when you have 
an engine in here. You don't want the flex plate just hanging out or flywheel just hanging out. So we'll probably load a dummy trans on it just to keep that covered. Help keep the balance, the, you know, the engine balanced where it needs to be. And then uh, we'll have a pretty sweet engine stand. I still got a bunch of material here. So if I feel like we need any other crossbars or anything to help make it more rigid. But really it should be pretty good. These are all short lengths so it shouldn't have too much flexibility or movement. Then somewhere on the back... I think I'm going to make a little pedestal for, a, you know, like a control board. So it should be pretty quick, easy, and simple just to build, you know, a cool little run stand that costs very little money. If you've been on the channel, you know we love to buy dirt cheap marketplace engines. And it would be like, it's way more beneficial for us to play around with that engine, tune it, make sure it's halfway decent on the stand before we commit to putting it in a car. I mean, this car wouldn't be that hard to put it in because it's it's already a park, but you know, our other three cars are all together and it's a lot of work to pull the engine, to put a new one in just to find out it's junk. So this will be a cool little unit for the channel that I'm sure we'll get plenty of use out of. So I gotta get the Ventura out of here because it's still in the same spot from the quarter panel. And uh, then we'll get that unit in there and start welding drill holes and getting this thing into a, uh, a rolling car. Then once I've got everything welded and fit up, then we can get it kind of wire wheeled and probably have the kids paint it. So let's get to work. Hey daddy. Hey Dave. Hey daddy. Hey Matt. Who else has uh, this corner in the garage that's just totally overrun with every nut and bolt they just couldn't bring themselves to throw out? I don't even know what's over here. I just know that I knew that I couldn't live without it. At one point, this was just drill press and tooling and a couple miscellaneous pieces. Now it's a little bit of everything. Hey, Daddy. Hey, lady. Four for four fit. Sometimes it's like I know what I'm doing. Now that all my plates, you know, bolt to the caster wheels, I've got to make the legs. So for the back, because it's obviously lower to the ground than the, fr the front of the frame like steps up. So for the back, I've got little four inch blocks. I'm going to weld these to the center of the plates. And then for the fronts, it's going to be taller up front. So I've got eight inch blocks. So uh, we'll get these welded up. Alright, so we've got the frame, you know, on the wheels, and I threw a level on this thing, perfectly level, super good. 
I'm really happy with the height of it. It's pretty much the lowest that I can go without those, you know, with those back wheels because of how I need it to sit. So this is basically the lowest I could go. It's gonna work great for what we're doing with it. I did jump on the front of it and it doesn't try to tip over dangerously. So I think we'll be all right. Worst case scenario, I'll weld a post or something to the back of it that we can slide some big weights on to keep it from trying to tip, but I don't think it's going to. I still wanna drill through these so that I can put like a big clevis pin in there because right now everything is just loose. I just slid them in real fast just to make sure they fit. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, death wheel here to get this thing cleaned up because it's gross. 40 something years in a junkyard will do that to it. So here we go. Are you ready to paint? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Can I help you? Yeah. I can do the other side. Man, Madison, you're doing a good job. Have you done this before? No. No? No. I'm just a painter. Painting it cool. Madison, you did a really good job. Like I got, a really, really good job. I got this oil on my side. I know, but you didn't even miss anything. You did a really good job. You missed, look. I missed a lot? Yes, you missed right here and kind of right here a little bit. I think you're right. I think I did lose some stuff. I would have that that picture. You'll have to double check my work. Oh, and that looks really good because I did it. I know, that's what I was thinking okay. too. Last time, it was so boring at hot because we just sat in the bed and watched TV. It's yeah. so boring. So boring. Because we didn't even play anything. That's what I was thinking. That sounds mm -hmm. kind of boring. When you watch TV and sit on your bed, it's really boring. When you play, it's more fun. More fun. What about when you build stuff? Is that fun? Mm -hmm, yeah. When you make race cars? Yeah. Yeah? Because that's also fun and you're kind of just paint and that's but if you just watch TV that long because um you just sit and this is it too and this is like moving and painting. Moving and grooving. Moving and grooving? What? Moving and grooving. Oh they got what somewhere here. Oh, you're drawing on me now. Look. Yeah. What are you yeah. doing to me? Well you only get it. Hey, hey! <laughs> I think that's good, Madison. I think we're all good. Uh, 
we definitely have a list of errands and stuff we gotta run. So I'm gonna go grab my pops and we're gonna go check some stuff off the list. For the engine stand, we're gonna need like a dummy, dummy transmission uh, just to keep the engine where we want it to be. If we ran a solid mount, we probably wouldn't need that. The motor probably wouldn't lean back. We're just gonna run normal engine mounts. So the engine's probably gonna tilt back if it doesn't have a trans on it. So we're gonna get a trans case that we could throw on there just to keep everything nice and level, solid in there. Uh, maybe for like the future long-term use, we'll fabricate some kind of like, uh, like some kind of mid plate design that'll keep it so you don't have to put a transmission on it. But uh, for now, that'll work. So we're gonna go pick that up. And then we've got carburetors that we gotta drop off. Uh, the 70 needs help. Our buddy Darius over at T4 Carburetors. Everybody I know him. Everybody I know knows him as uh, Tiny. My son can't figure out why. Tiny's gonna hook us up with a carburetor for the 70. He's got some, he's got some tricks up his sleeve and he's like the mad scientist of carburetors. He's a tuning expert when it comes to these things. You just give him a couple specs and he just magically pumps out a perfect unit. Uh, so we're gonna head over there to his shop, drop some stuff off with him, see what he's got going on. And then hopefully by this afternoon, we're back on the uh, engine stand project. Get that finished up, maybe wired, and uh, we can dump a motor in there and see what we got. Ah! This raining? What are you doing? I also totally forgot to tell you about this purchase that we made. I don't, I don't even know if you can call it a purchase because really I just kind of let Brian hold my money and I hold his money for a little bit of time and then we kind of trade it back. Did you guys do it? It was like almost an even swap of... Almost, yeah, it's just kind of like I hold that. I hold his <laughs> money. Said, here's my transmission. Here's for, yours. So Brian is a friend of mine that I met you know, through the car community. He has a Nova, he's a cool dude. He's building a race car, a drag and drive machine into it. He wanted to put a power glide in the car and it just so happened, I you know, I had a whole bunch of power glides. My power glide needed to be built, but the power glide that was originally in the Janko, I sold to him. He had a Super T10 four speed in the car. And I was like, well, when you yank that out, I, I called dibs on that. So we picked up the trans with all the clutch, bell housing, all the stuff. Also a bunch of other crap, roll cage. Uh, or what else did we even get? Track, uh, all sorts of stuff. Leaf springs, traction bars. Right. But springs. the last time I saw this transmission, the car was driving with it. Now it's broken. Right. Th that doesn't mean contact me and sell me your broken stuff <laughs> for all of you out there. If you have non-broken stuff, but it's okay. Brian's a good dude. He he launched the car hard at the drag strip, broke. We're keeping our fingers crossed. It's only first gear, like in the Chevelle. Yeah, we blew up the trans in the Chevelle, doing almost the same thing. So, so if you're looking at like three to five hundred dollars for a first and second gear, new seals, bearings, then we're ahead of the game because these are like you know anywhere between twelve and twenty-two hundred dollars, you know, rebuilt. The, the shifter alone, you know how yeah. much you're paying yeah, for Yeah, you got it. Just shifter and linkage could be two, three hundred dollars for a used setup, so. All right, but it's a fine spline, 400, 400 output, output shaft, shaft, so it's good street strip transmission. So if we have to put three to five hundred dollars into it, you're ahead of the game. And then at least we know what's in it, yeah. too, you know. Because so. we would have done the same thing. <laughs> oh, would, yeah. We would have blown it up. So the plan is to replace the Saginaw in the Janko with this, because you've seen the Saginaw just, it's had it. It's tired. Ow! And, and to put money into the Saginaw doesn't make any sense. No, I mean, we probably will anyway. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you want to do? Rip the shifter Let's off of this? Get the before? shifter off. Richie doesn't need that in his way. All right. We're going to, we'll check back in. We're going to tear this thing down a little bit. All right, what do you got? Um, Somebody showed up this morning and forgot the golden rule. Oh. 
so we're gonna stop at Dunkin' Donuts up here. <laughs> I guess that means I have to buy. <laughs> Someone's gonna pay the price. What are you getting, like a full breakfast? Yeah. Oh, yeah. don't forget ever again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so the trans is delivered to Richie. RW performance transmission. So when he gets a chance, he's gonna take a look at that for us. See how bad that's tore up. But like we said, either way, either way, we're gonna be ahead of the game with that unit. Even if we have to do worst case scenario on that, it's still gonna be better than buying somebody else's used trans and hoping for the best. So at least we'll know what's in it. And uh, now we're over heading over to. Uh, Darius with T4 carburetors. Yeah, you're going right here. All right, so we'll right check there. in with there. Yeah, this is him right here. All right, so we dropped off our uh, broken and dilapidated parts with RW transmissions and T4 carburetors. So in a few weeks, we'll be back to pick that stuff up. But in the meantime, the engine stand is completed. Now, this was a pretty cheap project in my opinion we scooped up the engine stand for thirty dollars the most expensive piece of this whole thing was buying these big heavy duty caster wheels which you probably don't need to do you probably don't need something as like beefy as these things uh these are like wheelbarrow wheels I, that was the most expensive part of the whole thing i think i'm in the wheels for like 80 bucks but the rest of it's just assembled with stuff we had laying around. Some square tubing that we made work, some old gauges, a switch panel. There's really nothing fancy here. And when you compare, you know, we're into this maybe $120. If you had to go buy all the hardware and stuff, maybe $150. But if you were going to buy one of these things online, they're like between $500 to $1,500, depending on how fancy you want to get. And for us, this thing is going to work awesome uh, we want to test that small block in here that'll be the first thing to go up probably in the next video this is going to work awesome for us and the other thing too is you know we love our novas and using you know a nova subframe if later on we decide to get into any like the turbo ls stuff and we need to start fabbing up some pipes for hot and cold side uh we could do that you know what i mean we have plenty of fenders and stuff laying around we could basically build the front engine bay and assemble everything and get it all set up off the car and then just then we never have to take a car out of commission we could just when we're ready bam pull the trigger i mean it sounds good right anyway i hate letting stuff go to waste when i see something like this i just feel like it needs to be repurposed so i feel like this is an awesome repurpose for not only this subframe you know a little bit of the twisted frame rail up there but also this rad support and plus, it was a super cool project to do, get the family involved. My kids painted the frame. You don't care what it looks like. It's an engine stand, you know what I mean? So just get out there in the garage with your family, make some memories, have a good time, because really that's what it's all about, guys. So that's gonna do it for this episode. Let me know what you think. What do you, you know, was the engine stand worth it? Was this a cool project? Do you care about stuff like this? Only show us cars? You know, let me know what you think. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.